Welcome back, my Audioholics friends. We're here today. I'm Gene Delasala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, what would you like to talk about on this lovely day? Well, you know, we've had a lot of requests on our YouTube channel for people to show us, show them, I'm sorry, show them the Audioholics showcase room. You know, ah, okay. Where do we do our testing? What kind of equipment we have? Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd do a little overview, at least of the Audioholics home theater room. We have actually three theater rooms mm -hmm. in, in this place. But this is our bread and butter here. This is our right. Big Billy Baru, if you yeah, will. Yeah, exactly. Here's where, where we host the, the main cannons yeah. right here. So we got some serious stuff going on in this room. This is a literally a quarter of a million dollar room here. And um, I think the first place to start would be with the room acoustics. Okay, we started off, um, we have a rectangular, it's actually an L-shaped room. It's the primary where we're sitting is rectangular, but the right wall doesn't have a, it actually doesn't have a full wall. It's back towards a window where we have a, where we have this bar, okay? So the room is not fully symmetrical and that's, you know, that's a downer. I could have closed off this wall to make it a perfect rectangle and I would have had all the early reflections preserved for left and right speakers, but it would have killed the dynamic of the room. You know, you would have come in here, you would have felt like you were in like a little waiting area like a, yeah. to go into the theater room. Right. And I wanted a functional room, and most people want functional rooms. They don't want just a dedicated area just for listening. They want to be able to hang out and socialize. So I called up our friends at Oralex, Oralex mm -hmm. Acoustics, and mm -hmm. I told them, look guys, I want to fix this room. I've got some issues in here. I've got some asymmetries. I've got a little bit too much echo. I want to fix it, but I also want to be practical about it. I don't want to throw a bunch of bass traps everywhere because I'm going to use multiple subs. You don't need bass traps when you have multiple subs right. for the most part. So, you know, they were very gracious. They came down, they took a look and they're like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll do this room for you. We'll make it look like a home theater like you want it to. We put the sconces and you, you know, you could see all that. They were here for four days, 14 hours each day. Wow. Working on this room. I mean, I've never seen anything <laughs> like it, man. And they didn't just uh, put acoustic treatment up, they built it over the existing walls, okay? So we have absorption, like on the left wall, we have absorption by the first reflection point, so it makes it balance out the sound of having no wall over here. Then we've got diffusion, you know, we've got diffusion on the ceiling in the listening area, we've got some absorption on half the wall behind the speakers, kind of like a live end, dead end. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, want to make, I didn't want to make the room too dead, so I took the carpets out of the room, I put a hardwood floor, but I also put a padded throw rug mm -hmm. at the first reflection point. And um, it worked out really great. And then up at the ceiling here, I put some um, some absorption to get rid of the slap echo. Right. So overall, the room is very, um, it's acoustically controlled, but it doesn't sound like you're in an anechoic chamber. Right, right. Because you don't want a dead room. Right. Okay. And then, um, you know, we basically measured everything. We found the best seat locations. We have two rows of seating, and those seatings were, were um, sponsored by Continental Seating, very comfortable seats. The nice thing about the chairs is they have a kind of a tapered back, so it doesn't block your ears from the surround effect. It doesn't, you know, make it too absorptive. So it's a very, I hate to say a good sounding seat. Yeah. But, we, but really, I mean, it, it really does. I've, heard, I've sat in many theater seats at people's homes and it's just like, you sit down, it's like you're being in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You don't get that as much with this. So it's really, it's great. And then we built a riser platform. You know, I wanted it to serve as two functions. The second row, I wanted it to be a little bit higher than the first row. That way you didn't see people's heads when you're looking at the screen. Right. And I wanted to make it a functional platform. So I, again, consulted with Oralex, and I built this platform in here. It's made out of MDF. It's got two by eights, like 16 inches on center. And inside the, into the, into the platform, I put 75% of it with like a fiberglass mineral fill. Mm -hmm. And then I cut, I put, uh, cut ports in it. So it acts like a Helmholtz resonator. So it kind of acts like a bass trap at lower frequencies, but it also shakes. So when you have the bass really hitting hard and you're sitting in that back row, you actually feel like a, like a natural, ba uh, natural bass uh, transducer. Right. <laughs> Some people may say that's 3D sound right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> sound from the ground. And then also I put lighting around it too. So at night you turn it on, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's just like being in a movie theater. That's awesome. So that covers the room acoustics. You know, um, it was a challenge, but we got a really good balance. And then the next thing I think we should talk about are the speakers. Yep, absolutely. The speakers are pretty unique and they're actually incredibly unique because I, I have like maybe 
one of the first or two first one or two pairs of them ever being built. They're the RBH Status Acoustic AT. You could check out our video review on them. You know, they're a $50,000 reference tower from RBH. They're a very unique speaker. 350 pounds a piece. <laughs> They've got three 10 inch high excursion subwoofers in each speaker, uh, four beryllium mid woofers, composite mid, uh, they're alloy beryllium and aluminum. Mm -hmm. And then they have that ScanSpeak uh, beryllium tweeter. Incredible, mm -hmm. one of the best tweeters. It actually is the best tweeter I've ever heard in my life. And everybody that's been in here has just been floored by it. And the nice thing about these speakers is I do have two more subs. I've got Validine DD15 Plus subs, incredibly excellent sealed subs. I got them strategically placed in the room to give you better modal distribution and mm -hmm. smoother bass in every seat. But the really cool thing about these RBH speakers, because they have such a large cabinet, and they've got three front firing drivers and two rear firing ports, mm -hmm. it increases the modal density and how basically that sub loads into the room. So the funny thing about it is I could turn off my Validine subs and I still get good bass at every seat and I'm barely using any EQ at all. That's awesome. I mean, I'm using no EQ on the speakers. I'm not using Odyssey or nothing. I'm only EQing the Validines to kind of put icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm barely using those, they're at a very low level. So, you know, I measured um, between 12 hertz to 100 hertz, I have a plus or minus 5 dB frequency response across all the listening seats, mm -hmm. which is extraordinary. I mean, my 3 dB point is 12 hertz. And I measured that at 110 dB, so I could literally blow windows out of this place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it shows. I yeah. mean, these speakers are incredible. It's, everything you have is incredible over here. Well, you know, I try to put the very best equipment I could find in this room. I mean, if it's in this room, it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the matching status 8C center channel that, that matches with the front towers. Right. We got the RBH 66 SERs for the side channels. They're a dipole, bipole. Mm -hmm. And then we got 61 SERs in the rear for the back channels. Mm -hmm. And I've got pre wires all over the place. I could add high channels and stuff. But you know, with six foot speakers in the front, do I really need a high channel? <laughs> <laughs> I already have a massive vertical sound stage as it is. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, absolutely. I no, could add it. No need. You know, you won't be seeing any reflection speakers in this room. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's no need for that. Not happening. Uh, eight foot ceiling, so that wouldn't work too well. I mean, there wouldn't be enough separation for that to work good. But um, we have, like I said, we have the two Valenant subs. All the cabling in here is done with 10 gauge blue jeans. But of course, on the front three channels, I've got the Kimber 8TC cables. Mm -hmm. Lower resistance, they look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it sounds great. We've got incredible electronics as well. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you about the, uh, the amplifiers, for example. These Status 8, 8T speakers require some pretty beefy amplification, especially because they dip down to two ohms. Sure. So I've got the Emotiva XPR1. They're two kilowatt monoblocks. Mm -hmm. So I got one amp powering each speaker. I'm running them full range, no bass management on the speakers. And uh, let me tell you, you could hit SPL levels that'll make Grandpa Simpson's teeth explode. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Wow. And then I've got I've got uh, I've got two racks basically. I've got a two-channel rig, which has a Marantz preamp, the PM11 S3, and I've got the Marantz TT15 S1 turntable. And then we've got the second rack of equipment, which is Middle Atlantic provided the rack, beautiful rack. It's functional because it pulls out. I could work mm -hmm. on it very easily. The second rack has a Denon AVP A1 HDCI preamp processor, and it's a unique gem, man. It doesn't have Dolby Atmos or any of that stuff, but it's a 60 pound preamp with class A differential outputs, fully balanced from input to output. I'm talking mm -hmm. about fully differential circuits, not this derived balanced nonsense that a lot of <laughs> consumer equipment has. And even the XPR1 amplifiers, those are fully differential from input to output. You know, so that's having differential amplifier, it basically lowers distortion, increases signal and noise ratio, and it, you know, it just eliminates any possibility of getting hums. Right, right. So we also have the match and 10 channel amp from Denon, the POA HDC1, I don't even remember the names anymore. <laughs> the, the model numbers are ridiculous. Let's just suffice it to say, Denon doesn't make this gear anymore, and I'm gonna be ho holding on to it for a while, quite frankly, because I haven't found a preamp that I feel is worth replacing it with okay okay that's a big statement yeah i mean you know it's not it would be nice to have the next generation surround kodak but it's such a dicey thing right now it's such a transition there's no there's no real software to support it yeah and i'm already in 
seven channel Nirvana as mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got the Oppo BDP 105, which you see here. Beautiful Blu ray player, universal player, so it does all the high def. I got a four terabyte hard drive plugged into this baby, so I'm streaming all my music I downloaded from HD tracks. You know, 192, 24 FLAC files, mm -hmm. Studio Masters, incredible. Yeah. I've got um, APC power conditioners with battery backup. Um, it is important to have power conditioning and battery backup, especially on your projector. We have an Epson 6020 projector, beautiful projector. It's 3D, but of course I never use 3D. <laughs> <laughs> we know about that fat. And then we've got the screen over here. It's a 110 inch Carrata, beautiful screen. It's a high gain screen, so we get great contrast ratios. I mean, I could even have lights on in here and I still get a good picture. And uh, you know, that's, that's about it. I mean, oh, and we also have, just to let you know, since we have three home theaters, we also have a Marantz receiver in here, a 6004, I believe. That runs the bedroom system, which is a 5.2 in wall with all our VH speakers. All that equipment is up here and it's wirelessly controlled downstairs. And then in our family room system, I have a Yamaha, an old RX Z7. Mm -hmm. I won't let go of that because I love the orange lights on the Yamaha. And I'm running a 7.2 system in there with all RBH speakers and JL audio subs. And then every room in the house has at least two channel. We've got, I think last time I counted, we have like 50 speakers in the house. Front yard, the gym, the backyard, every room has audio. When I built this house back in 2005, I had the builders uh, working on the cabling diagram I provided them. They were cursing in Spanish <laughs> and uh, they didn't realize that my wife speaks Spanish and I kind of understand a little bit of it. They were cursing because of all the cable terminations. Right. We have 10,000 feet of speaker cable Jesus. and coax just behind drywall. We're living in a Faraday cage, man. You can't get a cell phone signal. Here. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> Yeah, so every 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 room in this house has Ethernet, it has speaker cable. I've got a, a data center in the um, in the uh, laundry room, mm -hmm. you know, with all of our files. We have Verizon files in here, and it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, I have communication between all three systems. I can run four independent zones of audio, two of which would be in 7.1 at the same time, mm -hmm. running different audio. I mean, it's just I went a little crazy. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all for the good purpose. Yeah, and you know what we what the cool thing is is if we're evaluating other gear, since I have this separate two channel rig, I could I could even throw in another receiver. I've got pre wires all over the room, so I don't have to disturb our primary reference system. Right. I could run a separate five point one mm -hmm. or seven point system and compare it to our reference. Exactly. And that's you know, I've done that many times. That's how I've come up with replacement products. If I find something that performs better than what's in here then I'm going to gravitate towards changing it. Yeah, so the system is always improving. Yeah, yeah although it's hard to improve the speakers we have now. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a tall order, in my opinion. Yeah. Literally. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're pretty much reaching the, the law of diminishing returns at this point, but, you know, who knows? In 10 years or two years, maybe uh, we'll have speakers surround sound coming from the floor. Or maybe it'll be in the jacuzzi. I don't know. <laughs> we have no The clue. industry is always looking for the next big win. So <laughs> I know. This last one didn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but that's another story. Anyways, awesome, Gene. Cool, cool, cool. Anything else you would like to add about this? No, I mean, you know, you know just take a look at the B-roll and um, look at the footage we have here and just realize uh, we, have a, we have an article that shows all the equipment if you're more interested in knowing the equipment we're using. In fact, I probably need to update the tables. They're probably a little outdated, but um, that's it. You know, we've got great in walls from Paradigm speakers. You got one right here. I'm getting ready to install in the guest room, so my mother-in-law gets high fidelity. Yeah, I know. She gets right? an $1,100 pair of Paradigm speakers. Who loves you, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the family has. Uh nice pair of uh, speakers we try to nice elevate system. we try to elevate everybody to have good sound well with that said make sure that you go ahead and let us know what you think and what other videos you'd like to see and feel free to subscribe and share this video with your friends and until next time keep, keep listening, listening.